Okay, we're in section 24 of the notes. This is the assignment on quadratic equations. Uh, so what we've covered, we've covered the, um, the introduction to this, solving quadratic equations, you know, standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Uh, again, we discussed this. We discussed the ways we like, at least I would like you to try doing these, which is factoring. Uh, I did mention the square root method. That's often confused by students, but we'll talk about that in more detail as time goes on. And we also talk about the quadratic formula. Although this is an introduction to it, uh, I'm not gonna use the quadratic formula unless expressly, it is expressly stated. Uh, furthermore, I would much prefer that we derive the formula which will come later when we get to, um, you know, perfect squares or completing the square. And um, we'll get to that later. And again, certainly we'll get there. So we want to do examples. Hopefully those examples are understood, all right? You wanna study the material. Once you study the material though, and you understand the examples that are presented to you, the goal is to start to do homework. There's homework in the notes. There's also a web assign. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the uh, whiteboard and just give me one second to do that. And we're going to start doing problems. All right. The expectation is you've studied the material. You've gone over the examples that we've done in class and that you've done the homework at this point. All right, now when I say the homework, the homework in the notes, not the web assignment. All right, give me one second here. I'm trying to get my, uh, my computer open here. Okay, so um, you're seeing the whiteboard now. And again, I want to tell you what section we're in. We're in section. And what are we doing? We're doing the homework. All right, let's read it. It says, write the quadratic equation in standard form. Again, remind you, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now, by the way, they want the coefficient on the x squared term to be positive. So they want a to be a positive number. After I do that, they want to identify the A, the B, and the C in the problem. Well, let's take a look at it. What do you have? Six minus X times three minus X equals 11 plus three X. Well, I gotta tell you, it's clearly not in the form that they want. First of all, I don't have a zero on one side. So what I'm gonna do is I simplify each side separately. So what do you get? Six minus three X plus X squared equals 11 plus 3x, right? I still don't have the zero and I don't have it in the proper order either. Let's go through it. So I'm gonna subtract 3x from both sides and I'm gonna subtract 11 from both sides. And what would you get? Well, if you did that, on the right side, you get zero, which is good news. I wanted that. Now, what do you get in the left side? I wanna go in order. You get x squared minus 6x minus five, all right, this is standard form. They asked for it. Now, could there have been, a, could I have made a mistake? Of course, we'll look at the key later, standard form. What's the coefficient on the x squared term? It's a, it's positive, so that's good. I'll write this down. A is one, B is the coefficient on the linear term, minus six, and C is the constant, which is minus five. Let's see if I've answered the question. Can you look at it? X squared minus 6X minus 5 equals 0. A is 1. B is minus 6. C is minus 5. All right, let's go to number 2. Again, if this is going too quickly for you, my suspicion you haven't done the homework and you haven't probably said the material at this point. You want to do that before you do this. Do the homework first. If you need additional help, though, there's nothing wrong with that. Come by during office hours, and I'll be more than happy to help you. So number two. And number two says solve by factoring. I, I, I like the factoring technique. And, and by the way, in the past, I would have called it the zero product rule, but now they're calling it the factoring technique. And what does that mean? Well, it's still zero product rule. I got the zero, but I don't have the product. So I'm going to factor it. That's three X comes out. We left off with X minus three equals zero. 
let's write the factors down. Uh, again, when I say factor, I'm going to put 3x to the factor equals 0, or the other factor, which is x minus 3, is equal to 0. Fairly simple. x is 0, or x is equal to 3. If you want to check those answers, check them in the original. I'm just going to look at my answer key. It's like an old problem for us. x is 0, or x is 3. All right. Let's go to number 3. And what's number three? It, again, solve by factoring. So I want to point out uh, in the past, we just said solve by using the zero product rule. Now they're just simply saying solve by factoring. It's still a zero product rule. So what's my first step to get a zero by subtracting 54 from both sides. I'm going to factor that. There's a GCF, which is two. I get X squared minus six X. Uh, let's see, 25, 27, right? I'm going to keep factoring 2, x and x. Let's see, 9 and 3, minus 9 plus 3. Set the factors equal to 0. I hope you realize that 2 is never equal to 0. So the factors I'm looking at that could be 0, x plus 3 could be 0, right? Or the other factor, x minus 9, could be 0. So x equals minus 3, or x equals 9. And we factor that. I'm sorry, we saw by factoring, which is zero product rule. Get your little pen out, see if you got it right. What does it say? X is minus three or X is nine. Let's go to number four. Again, these will be published at the end of the week. You're more than uh, welcome to watch them at the end of the week or off schedule. We'll take a look at this one. Number four is X plus 27 equals X squared minus five X. Well, again, they say solve by factoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 27 from both sides. I want to encourage this, by the way, that um, certainly it'd be nice if the coefficient on the square term were positive. It's not an absolute, though, by the way. You could have it negative, and it's still going to be workable. But most students find it easier to do this. So what do you get if you did um, what I said to do was subtract x, subtract 27? We get 0. And again, this is, they say solve by factoring. It's still a zero product rule. x squared minus 6x minus 27. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to factor it. Let's see, 9 and 3, right? Like deja vu, minus 9 plus 3. And I'm getting better at this. I'm going to say x equals minus 3 or x equals 9. Again, my recommendation, look at the answer key and hopefully you're staring at those answers, minus three or nine. All right, let's take a look at number five, a little different instruction now. They don't say solve by factoring, they say solve by using the square root method. And when you see 16 X squared minus nine equals zero. So what, what the square root method really depends on is that you have some variable expression squared, some variable expression squared equals a number. Well, I'm gonna put this down. What do you get? I get 16 X squared is equal to a number nine, right? That's a variable expression squared. Unfortunately, that 16 is a little bothersome to me. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 16. And what do you get over there? X equals nine, I'm sorry, X squared equals nine sixteenths. And by the way, once I get this down over here, what I'm going to use square root method was to say this something is equal to plus or minus the square root of that number. Let's write this down. X equals plus or minus the square root of this number, which is 9 sixteenths. What's this going to be? Plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. Again, can't say enough times. Look at the answer key to make sure you're staring at that. All right, let me keep going, number six. Again, this is mirroring what we've done in class. So it should be really a similar, if not the same problems. So let's say number six, it says write a quadratic equation that has integer coefficients and has a solution of the given, of the given pair of numbers. So I'll write this down with this. It says one of the solutions is X is two and the other one is X equals minus five. So I'm gonna work backwards. And what would this mean? 
x minus 2 is equal to 0. What would this mean? x plus 5 is equal to 0. I'm still working backwards. This came from a product, x minus 2 times x plus 5. 0 product rule. I'm going to multiply that out. What do you get? x squared. Let's see, 5 minus 2 is plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. And this is what they want me to come up with. All right, let me read again to you, write a quadratic equation that is integer coefficients. That certainly has integer coefficients and the solutions of the given numbers, and we got that. So let's look at the answer key, and I'm looking at it, and they have uh, the answer down, x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0, and I feel good about that. I'm going to go to number uh, 7 now. Whoops. And what's number 7? Solve by square root method. I'll write that down for you. Well, it couldn't be easier. x equals plus or minus square root of 9. x equals plus or minus 3. That's done. Look at the answer key, and you should be staring at it. Let's go to number 8. What do you see for number 8? x plus 2 squared equals 3. They say stop by using the square root method. Again, it couldn't be easier. We have a variable expression, x plus two is being squared, plus or minus the square root of three. All right, what do you get? x equals minus two plus or minus root three. Now box on that. Look at my answer key. What am I seeing over there? Minus two plus or minus root three. Let's keep going. Whoops, no more to do. All right, I'm gonna go back to another share with you. And give me one second. And again, we just finished that problem set. All right. So what are we doing now related to Sage code? We'll click on this. Remember, if your computers are properly um, uh, configured, when you click on that link, a web browser should open up and it should launch that sage.math.org website. Go to CalCalc. We've been doing this since day one. Now, when you go to CalCalc, what you're going to do is you're going to create a new Sage worksheet. And I'll, I'll briefly work through the code. Again, we're trying to get you guys introduced to coding. You're not going to be tested on this, nor are you required to do this. It's not part of the, um, of the curriculum at Essex County College. I'm going to make a Sage worksheet. And again, we've been doing this for a very long time now. Sage is a little slow today. It happens, by the way, a lot of people might be using it. Let's reset. We've been doing this for a very long time. Remember, shift return. X is a variable. It's a good habit to, um, to define variables. And I'm going to solve an equation. And someone says, what equation are you going to solve? The one they have there. What is it going to be? It's 2 star x. That means 2x minus 3 squared. Remember the double equal sign is an equation is equal to 25 comma x. Shift return. All right, it's working. I see the blinky green thing. This is x equals 4 or x equals minus 1. And again, if you want to put the next one in, solve 3 star x squared plus 2 star x Remember, if you type in something incorrectly, you're going to see an error message. Don't worry about that if you do. You're certainly bound to see an error message. Okay, x equals minus 2 or x equals 4 thirds. Right, relatively simple. All right, thank you.